Hi everyone. I'm a long-time Photoshop user. I started using it when it came on floppy disks, but there's one thing GIMP does better, working with GeoTIFFs. In this video, I'll show how this works and why you should add GIMP to your toolbox even if you have Photoshop. If you're not familiar with GIMP, it's a free, open source image editing program. It has much of the same capability as Photoshop and, like QGIS, it's free. The interface isn't nearly as clean or well-designed as Photoshop or other Adobe applications, but you can't beat the price. It's a must-have for map making because of how it handles geotiffs. You can open a geotiff, make changes such as exposure or coloring, using filters, and so on and export it as a geotiff, and the geographic metadata stays intact. That's something Photoshop can't do, and is a real boon for making maps using raster data, such as the Natural Earth Files. Here's how this works. Natural Earth Files. The files at Natural Earth, naturalearthdata.com, are a great resource for creating maps. They make ideal base maps for many projects, but they can look a bit washed out. This is usually ideal for most maps, since it makes text more easily readable, but sometimes you might want the image to be stronger. QGIS has very limited ability to alter files like this. Using Photoshop is complicated and doesn't always work. GIMP solves this problem. The natural earth files are all geotiffs, so you can open them directly in QGIS and add shape files to them. Here's the natural earth one file. I'd like to increase the contrast to make the colors stronger. I'll open the downloaded file directly in GIMP and a warning briefly appears. You can ignore this warning. GIMP will open the file correctly. To adjust the contrast, I'll go to Colors, Levels and move the black point marker inward to increase the contrast. I also enable the split view to make it easy to see the difference. That looks good. I also want to adjust the color balance to make the oceans less greenish, so I'll go to Colors, Color Balance and move the top slider, cyan, red, to the right. That looks good. Now I'm ready to save the file. I'll go to File, Export and enter a new name and click Export. Leave the file extension as .tiff. This window appears. Notice the Save Geo TIFF data checkbox. That's what does the magic. Leave everything at the default settings, but make sure the Save Geo TIFF data box is checked and click Export. It might take a while to save the file. Now I'll switch to QGIS. I'll load the modified Geo TIFF by dragging it onto the map canvas. Now I'll add a shape file of country borders. Finally, I'll change the CRS to World Robinson. And there we are. You can also use GIMP's filters to give your map a painted look, a really easy way to get a vintage map effect. Using other raster files, GIMP can open the natural earth geotiffs directly with no problems. That's not the case with all geotiffs, though. Some geotiffs won't open correctly in GIMP. If you have one of these, or a raster that's not a geotiff, such as a Google Earth base map, or a georeference PDF, like many topographic maps, you'll need to convert it to a geotiff before you can edit it in GIMP. This is an easy process. Here are the steps. Load the base map, or geo PDF, into QGIS. Here I've loaded a section of Alaska using the ESRI topographic base map. This looks too light to me so I want to get it into GIMP to adjust the exposure and tweak the colors. I need to export it from QGIS as a geotiff to do that. Go to Project, New Print Layout to open a print layout window. Click the Add Map button and draw a box to add the image. Go to Layout, Export as Image. Name the file and choose TIFF from the Format menu, then click Save. You have to choose TIFF as the format for this to work. The image export window will appear. Set the desired resolution and check the generate world file box, then click save. Your image is now a georeference geo TIFF, complete with a .twf file. Next, I need to modify it in GIMP. 
Open it in GIMP and make your edits. I've increased the contrast and shifted the color balance. Now I'll export it as a TIFF. Here I've loaded it into QGIS and added some shape files. And there's my improved map. Softening dims. Using shaded relief can add an important element to a map, but it can often look overpowering. Here's a 10 meter DEM with the hillshade procedure applied. There are two ways in QGIS to improve this relief. Lighten it and lower the contrast or downsample the data. I cover both of these options in the NPS style shaded relief chapter of my guide, but GIMP offers a third way that often produces better results, blurring the original DEM. This takes advantage of GIMP's ability to work with GeoTIFFs. Here are the steps. Download the DEM from one of the usual sources. Make sure it's in GeoTIFF format. Here's an area near Denver downloaded from the USGS national map. Now I'll run the hill shade procedure and set the Z factor at 0. 0.00005. It looks pretty rough. I can try to soften it by changing the settings. See the NPS style shaded relief video for more about this. Here's what I get with that. That's better, but I really want a softer effect. I could downsample the file, but that's a hassle and completely unnecessary. I'll export the original DEM from QGIS as a GeoTIFF before I applied the hill shade, using the same process as before, then open the exported file in GIMP. Now I'll apply the blur by going to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Enter a number in either the size X or Y field. They're linked, so they should change together. Here I've set a value of 10. Click OK. One more important thing to do. When you export a file from GIMP, by default it will be in RGB color mode. This causes it to come into QGIS as a multiband color file. In order to use the hill shade function, the file has to be in single band gray mode. To fix this, convert the file in GIMP by going to Image, Mode, Grayscale. Once that's done, export the file as a TIFF. Make sure the Save Geo TIFF data box is checked. Open this file in QGIS and apply the hill shade. Now I'll adjust the settings as before. And there's my softened relief. This is a good technique to use when the relief is an enhancement to the map, not an important feature. Many National Park Service maps have a similar look for the relief. This makes it easy to add labels and other data while keeping it easy to read. Here's another example. While this technique can be used on any terrain, it produces the best results on terrain that's not too rocky, such as the Appalachian Mountains in the eastern U.S. Here's a section of the region. Here I've loaded the DEM into QGIS. I then exported this as a GeoTIFF and opened it in GIMP. Now I'll add the blur using a setting of 10, converted it to grayscale, exported the image, and loaded it into QGIS. Next, I'll run the hill shade and adjust the levels. You may need to experiment with these settings and the Z factor to get the look you want. Finally, I'll add some vector data. And there's my softened relief. Here's the original relief without the blurring. Again, if the terrain is really important, you might not want to blur it. But if it's an enhancement, softening it can make the map more attractive and a lot easier to read the labels. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.